Okay, and here we are. I just started my recording, and looks like I have a dynamic type of hand. Not quite an opening bid up to our methods. You may laugh, but it's closer than you may think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven losers. Actually, only a seven loser hand. Count losers, you get two diamond losers, one club loser, two heart losers, and two spade losers. Um, so this, um, I'm probably going to inquire about the no trim range. I'm assuming it's strong. I don't really have enough to bid under the gun, although it's very tempting. It's, this is, I'm assuming this is actually a match point game. I think I will bid, so I'm going to ask about the no trim range for starters. Let's see if she writes. But if not, I'm going to prepare my alert description. You play Mechwell. Um, so double B clubs, diamonds, or majors. Um, we'll see. I think I would. If that's a strong no trump, I would definitely bid. If it's a weak no trump, then maybe not. But, alright, so I'm going to assume it's strong and give it a double for Mechwell. Because I think she would have uh, she would have told me if it's weak. Assuming one no strong. So Zachary and I play that a strong no trump is defined as one that has at least thirteen points. Or sorry, if it includes if it can include thirteen, then it's weak. And their no trump range is 14 to 16, so we do consider that to be strong. Um, and which is, Sylvia said, if it's 14 to 16, I don't know if you consider that strong or weak. It's kind of a funny question because actually Mechwell do play that a 14 to 16 no trump is weak. We don't go quite that extreme. We said if it includes 13, it's weak. Now Zachary's double is basically asking me to describe my hand. Uh, he wants me to bid. If I have clubs, diamonds, or the majors, he wants me to describe. Uh, it's just sort of a cooperative double. I'm waiting for the alert description on two spades. It might be a size ask. It might be a club transfer. That would be a common treatment. Uh, let's see if he can give a, uh, a description here. These people are a little slow with their alert descriptions. Uh, so we may, I might wait because I could actually pass depending on whether it actually shows spades. Let's see if he responds to a message since he's, he's slow to tell me what it is. Ranger clubs. All right. Maybe we'll play two spades double. We'll see. I obviously had the option of bidding three hearts here, but it would have had the effect of blocking out the clubs, which was something that I was considering. But this actually works as well. So Zach's bidding three hearts. Can't be bad. I've got five hearts. I do probably expect Sylvia to bid four clubs. Yeah, maybe I should have been should have bid three hearts. But I mean that Sylvia would have figured out it's a club transfer. In a way now Dan's range is a lot less known because he was sort of forced to bid uh, over the double. I'm definitely well positioned here. I'm very happy to have a fifth heart. And Zach clearly could extrapolate that I had hearts. I'm not bidding four hearts because I've already overbid my hand by getting in here, even though I do have a fifth heart, which is nice. But I don't know what's in my partner's hand. He usually bids his cards. He might double four clubs, yeah. And you see, I just don't have that much defense against this contract is my primary instinct. I mean, I think that he's just trying to tell me that he's got a good hand and he thinks it's our hand. 
I have a fifth heart. I might not have a fifth heart. Tough one. My instinct is a bit four hearts, uh, but you know we might have them just totally crushed depending on his hand. I do think that double is primarily penalty oriented, but he should have some cards. Well, tough, tough decision here. Yeah, I'm gonna bid four hearts. I mean, I, I just, I'm not too thrilled about our defensive chances here with with my fifth heart. He's got something like ace king of hearts. It's not really not gonna be good for our defense. I don't know. I don't know really what his double is based off. He could have just like random good hand, or he could have a strong penalty. The fact that Corbell has an insta double this kind of good news. He's probably thinking of doubling. I can't imagine that he's thinking of bidding five clubs. That would be a lot of bidding. If he's thinking of bidding five clubs, I definitely did the right thing. Yeah, he's slow past. It's going to put Sylvie in a tough position. She can't really double after a slow pass on a marginal hand. She, what is she going to do? She's going to pass. She can't do anything but pass. Partner took forever and passed. Can't imagine her being able to do anything but pass here. Yeah. All right. Good luck, partner. Let's see how he does. Really don't know what's in his hand. Okay, he's got no wastage. It looks like I may have been right to pull four clubs. I don't, you know, maybe we have a slow spade trick or something, but. I really, this, this really does not look like we wanted to defend four clubs double team. I'm very happy I pulled. It says no play. I think Zach was kind of in outer space with his double. I I think that he sort of bid his hand. It's true, we, he doesn't really know the range of my hand. And this was probably a lot weaker than he was expecting. King of spades there. And maybe we had a, maybe we actually had four tricks in the fence. Depends on diamonds go too, because if diamonds are four two, they might have been able to pitch off the spades. Let's say Dan has uh, let's say it's three two two six, and we're not and we're never seeing a spade trick if it's three two two six. They can just pitch it off. And it might be a good match point score not to get doubled and just to go down, float off a couple on this hand. So just a word on why people should make their no trump their double of one no, whether it's penalty or takeout. The rule should be based off the lower extrema of the 1-0 trump range and not the upper extrema. I've heard rules like if it includes 15, then it should be considered strong, which is relatively easy to remember. But 
the reason why you should make the rule based off the lower extrema is because the lower extrema comes up more often. Points, point counts closer to 10, closer to the average, come up more frequently. So if they play 12 to 15, you should really play that as a weak no trump. It's pretty much the same as 12 to 14. 15 comes up significantly less often than 12, 13, or 14. So you should make your rules based off of the lowest point count that it could be. So our rule is if it can include 13, 13 plus to 16, 13 whatever, it's considered a weak no trump when we play doubles penalty oriented. So it's stiff king of hearts, okay. So it's stiff heart. So maybe diamonds were three three, maybe he's three six six oh uh sorry, yeah, three one six six three one three six. Yes. I wonder what their carding is. Oh, he's got double, really doubletons. Wow, his 2-1 two, one for 2-1. Two, one. Oh, it's 5-2-1 on the diamonds. Okay. Yeah, uh, looks like Corbell had a lot of shape on this hand. But, my, he's getting diamond pitches now. I think they somehow butchered the defense by not shifting to diamonds earlier. He's going to play spade, spade, pitch to diamonds. Yeah, they had to get a diamond on the table before the spades got knocked out. 